Welcome scholars. This video will give you some more examples with calculations for limiting reactants and theoretical yields. And so the reactions shown here, aluminum metal reacting with a solution of potassium hydroxide, a solution of sulfuric acid in the presence of water, forming hydrogen gas, and this potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate is a classic reaction in general chemistry. If we were in the laboratory, this would be a reaction I would have you carry out. It occurs in a series of steps where you first react the aluminum metal with the potassium hydroxide. That's where the hydrogen gas is formed. Then as you drip that solution into chilled sulfuric acid, because a lot of heat can be given off by that reaction, you gradually form potassium and aluminum sulfates, which then given enough time to sit, will react together to form this double metal salt. These are typical of mineral types of um, substances. And this particular one can, could then be analyzed in the laboratory to determine the degree of hydration or even its melting point. This is a multi-step reaction and the reaction written down here represents the overall balanced reaction for the whole process, not the individual steps. And so if we knew that the whole thing was occurring in water, we might say that the water was present in excess and anytime you have that indication, that should make you cheer a little bit because it's one less calculation you need to do. And if we look at this reaction and say that we've got one gram of aluminum, three grams of potassium hydroxide, and 10 grams of sulfuric acid, and we want to know what the limiting reactant and the theoretical yield are, then we still take the same approach as in the concepts video where we take each of these amounts and convert them into grams of the product. Now, sometimes it gets tiring to write out a whole chemical formula. So you might give a nickname to something. In, in reality, the product here, the potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate is commonly called alum. And if you wanted to be more specific, it would be called potassium alum. But because alum is the common name for it, instead of writing out the whole formula every time, I've used alum as the label for that compound. And with one gram of aluminum, we could make 17.6 grams of alum. With three grams of potassium hydroxide, we could make 25.4 grams of alum. And with 10 grams of sulfuric acid, we could make 24.2 grams of alum. So again, we see that one reactant line, one calculation, one conversion, gives us the smallest amount of alum that we could form. So that, therefore, is the theoretical yield. And the reactant that it comes from is therefore the limiting reactant. The one gram of aluminum limits how much of the alum we could make. Whereas we have enough potassium hydroxide and enough sulfuric acid to make 25 or 24 grams of alum, we don't even have enough aluminum to make 18 grams of alum. We, we can only make 17.6. So again, the aluminum is the limiting reactant and the alum is the theoretical yield. This is my preferred method for calculating theoretical yields and limiting reactants because you kind of get both answers at the same time and then typically you're done with the question unless it was to ask you how much of the reactants were left, how much of the excess reactants remained behind. With the water, we don't know how much we started with if we're just told it's excess, so we can't calculate how much of that is left over, but we could calculate out of the three grams of potassium hydroxide and 10 grams of sulfuric acid, we could calculate how much of each of those reacted, and therefore we could calculate how much was remaining. 
This process could become very tedious though if we were doing multiple or more, many more reactants at once. And so just as before when you could use percents, mass percents, and those were incorporated into these conversions, or just as before when some people were multiplying molar masses by the coefficients in the reaction, and all of that still works out the same way for these gram-gram conversions, I wanna point out something that's here that is going to be defined as a particular quantity that we could choose to use if we wanted to. We certainly don't have to, but the circled amounts here, which if you think about it, we've got the moles, after we convert from grams to moles, we've got the moles here, and what we are then dividing by is we are then dividing by the coefficient from the chemical reaction. And so the moles of reactant divided by the coefficient from balanced equation is known as, or is defined as a chemical quantity called the chemical advancement. And this is symbolized by the Greek letter xi or xi. The Greek letter xi has these little loops. In English, we pronounce it as xi. In Greek, it's pronounced as xi. And this, just like it says advancement, we can think of this as the number of times the reaction is able to happen. In fact, we thought about this back when we looked at the nitrogen and we were thinking about the molecules and the diagrams with the nitrogen. If you think about those two diagrams, we actually applied this concept when we counted the molecules. When we said there were only three molecules of hydrogen, that this reaction could only happen once, what we were doing was we were taking the molecules of our reactant and dividing by the coefficient from the balanced equation. And so the hydrogen that was here could only advance the reaction once, the nitrogen that was here could only advance the reaction six times, so the lower chemical advancement was the limiting reactant. And so if we come back up top and look at the aluminum and the potassium hydroxide and the sulfuric acid, then we find for the aluminum that it has an advancement of 0 0.018532. The potassium hydroxide has an advancement of 0 0.026733. And the sulfuric acid has an advancement of 0 0.025. 489. If we wanted to put a label on these, we could think about these as being labeled as moles of reaction. So this literally is telling us how many times the reaction can occur. And notice that with all of these at this point, then we multiplied by the coefficient of the product we were interested in going to, and we multiplied by the molar mass. So the part in each of these lines that is not looped is actually the same for all three, which is why the proportion of these advancements still shows up in the proportions of these yields. This, of course, is the only one that matters. These yields would only be achievable with more aluminum. The advantage here is that once you identify the advancement of the reaction, 
as 0 0.018532 moles of reaction. Not only do you know what the limiting reactant is, but from that you could calculate the theoretical yield. Again, to get the theoretical yield, you would just multiply by the coefficient of the product and the molar mass of the product. Notice that if you have the advancement and you multiply by the coefficient, then you get moles of whatever you multiplied by the coefficient of. And so for our potassium hydroxide, we could convert this to two moles KOH and then multiply by the molar mass of the KOH to get to grams. Likewise, we could take this and multiply by four moles of sulfuric acid and the molar mass of the sulfuric acid to get grams of sulfuric acid. When you do those calculations, you find that the uh, one gram of aluminum, which we found the advancement of, would have required 1.93 grams of potassium hydroxide to completely react. And likewise, that one gram of aluminum would have required 7.27 grams of sulfuric acid to completely react. You could also compare those to the original amounts the three grams of potassium hydroxide minus 1.93 grams of KOH. So the three grams was present. The 1.93 grams is what reacted. And so 0. Point, or sorry, 1.07 grams KOH remain and 10 grams sulfuric acid present, 7.27 grams sulfuric acid reacted. So 2.73 grams sulfuric acid remain. So if you want to, you can keep in mind this idea of chemical advancement. You could use chemical advancement to determine limiting reactants. You could then use that advancement to determine the theoretical yield or you could use that advancement to determine other things in the chemical reaction. You do not have to use it. You can also go completely from grams to gram every time you're trying to solve for something. But chemical advancement is particularly useful when you have large numbers of reactants in an overall reaction.